One idea, for example, is instead of having a console application as the client that will just simply print subscription requests, snapshots. What's up guys, Coding Jesus here. Guys, in today's video, I want to highlight a project that I built that should serve as an example for people looking to break into the space as a junior or as an intern quantitative developer or software engineer that firms are looking for. All right, if you go on Optiver's website, you look at that intern position, you'll see that they're looking for people that show passion for software engineering, not just in school, but also outside of school. So I'm hoping that this example that I'm gonna be communicating with you guys today will serve as a very good foundational example for what these companies are looking for. Before we get into what the actual project is, I wanna talk about why I decided to build this project in particular, and that is because a lot of people miss this one skill that this project highlights, okay? What is that skill? Well, when I talk to people in my one-on-one -on -one consultation sessions, a lot of them don't understand the concept of client-server communication in the context of microservice architecture and distributed asynchronous systems. What do I mean by that? I just threw a whole bunch of buzzwords at you. You're probably like, coding Jesus, I have no idea what you're talking about. Let me break this down very simply. Imagine you have a server responsible for computing a lot of information. A lot of people at the intern level, still in school, they know how to produce programs that will spit out numbers, but they don't know how to produce programs that will spit out numbers and spit those numbers out in a data stream to another application. That application might be a front end that will be displaying that data, or it might be another server that's responsible for transforming that data even further. All right? So they're missing that cross application communication layer understanding, or sometimes what we call in the industry, middleware. Okay, they're missing that understanding of middleware, how middleware works, what are examples of middleware, et cetera. That's why for this project, I decided to build a market data dissemination simulator that uses gRPC, which is an open source uh, remote procedure call framework developed by Google to uh, use to build really scalable cross-service APIs. All right, now what does this project look like? Now let's get into the actual project itself. This project looks like two applications, okay? One is a server and one is a client. Before I speak about what's in each one of these, I'm going to mention, guys, that I'll be putting the code up here on the screen so that you can see, but if you want to see the entire code on GitHub, you need to become a patron, okay? Go down onto my Patreon, link in the description box below, you'll see all the code that you'd love, okay? Because I know that there's gonna be somebody watching this video, before I even get 30 seconds into this video, they'll be like, where's the code, oh, 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 where's the code, okay? That's where the code is. All right, now let's talk about the actual concept itself because what's more important than where's the code is understanding what the code's doing so that if somebody asks you to do something similar, you can do so easily, all right? Okay, let's talk about the first application, the server. The server is responsible for doing a couple of things. Let's talk about this in order. The first thing the server is responsible for doing is reading a configuration file that contains instruments and their contract specifications. All right, for the purpose of this simple example, I did two instruments, and I specified only three pieces of important information. Their ID, their symbol, which I never actually ended up using, and the contract specification, which just had a single field called order book depth. The order book depth simply says, how many levels on the bids and the asks do I want to disseminate to clients, okay? After the configuration file was read, I instantiated a server object, a order book manager, and an order book class, that are responsible for, amongst each other, generating order book updates, getting snapshots for newly connected clients, and disseminating both snapshots and incremental updates. What does that look like? Well, when an order book is created for an instrument that was loaded from the configuration file, what will happen is that we'll slowly start building the order book, and that will have a process that will mimic actual real life trading events. So for example, for a given price level on the bids or the asks, I can either replace an existing level, remove an existing level, like the level got deleted. For example, somebody had their bids there and they pulled and they were the only person on that level and the entire level disappeared. And if the order book's empty, of course, the only thing you can do is add new levels. As I add more levels, the likelihood of removing a level increases because obviously you can't remove a level if there is nothing in the order book. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Now, what I also decided to do was build a subscription mechanism in which a client will connect. And when they connect and specify an instrument ID on that initial connection, they will initially be sent a snapshot of the current state, and then they will receive a stream of incremental updates that they will need to apply onto their original snapshot. Now this is done for efficiency purposes. You don't wanna send the entire state of the order book to every client every time there's a change to the order book. 
Now, the actual streaming protocol that I used here for gRPC was a bi-directional stream in which a client can continuously send new subscription and unsubscription requests for various instruments and then read a stream of both snapshots and incremental updates. I also wanted to simulate kind of different types of state. So for example, if for example there is some event that causes a new snapshot to disseminate, a new snapshot can be created randomly in the middle of the stream. And the client will need to handle that snapshot by clearing its own state of incremental or, of, or snapshot plus incremental updates and taking that new snapshot as gospel, taking that new snapshot as the current state of the order book. Now what I decided to do as well on the unsubscribe, and these are all design decisions, guys. This doesn't mean that this is the gold standard. This is the way that I've learned to do it based off my own experience. What I decided to do on the unsubscribe is not just simply stop the stream of incremental and snapshot updates coming to the client, but I also decided to have the server send an empty snapshot to signify that the client should clear its cache of any existing snapshot state, all right, for that order book. So that's what I decided to do in building this project. Now, now I know I'm gonna hear somebody in the comment section that's gonna be like, well, <laughs> this is so easy. I can do this in 30 minutes. Okay, if you think it's easy, that's great. The purpose of whether this is easy or difficult isn't the point. The purpose is how can you impress an employer? And if you think you can do this in 30 minutes or one hour or it's too easy for you, go ahead and make it harder. Make it difficult to the point where you, as an individual, believe that it is worthy enough to impress a potential interviewer. I think where I stop right now is more than enough, but if you'd like to take a step further, you can do a couple of different things. I'm gonna give you guys two ideas in this video. One idea, for example, is instead of having a console application as the client that will just simply print subscription requests, snapshots, incremental state, and unsubscription requests, why don't you build a front end that actually visualizes this order book? that can show cumulative size, that can show prices, right? Something that you can maybe consume visually as opposed to needing to read from a console. Another example of how to make this project even better, for example, is to build another server application that acts as a client that is responsible for receiving all updates for all instruments and persisting this information in a database. So you have another service, another kind of like micro architecture like service that's solely responsible for persisting these updates in a database. It can be Cassandra, it could be MySQL, it could be et cetera. But guys, the theme of this video is threefold. One is understanding middleware, gRPC, et cetera, building those scalable APIs, distributed asynchronous systems in the context of market data dissemination, and making your own architectural decisions and justifying them. Because I can come and tell you, yeah, use MySQL. I can come and tell you, use DolphinDB. I can come and tell you, use Cassandra or MongoDB. But at the end of the day, when you're in that interview and you're highlighting this project, the interviewer is gonna ask you, why do you use this instead of that? So this is the point where, after understanding the project, maybe you've read through the original source code or you've kind of understood the little snippets that I've placed on this video, you now take a step back and say, how can I make this better? And why do I want to go in this direction as opposed to that direction? Alrighty, guys, I hope this video was useful. I hope you were able to learn from it. Once again, if you'd like to speak to me one-on-one, -on -one, my Calendly link is in the, the description box below. You can go ahead and book a session. If you'd like to see all the code in its entirety, become a patron. We do monthly calls. You, we have access to a Discord that's exclusive where I communicate with a lot of you guys and you gain access to the code, as I mentioned. And if you'd like to follow my life behind the scenes, guys, my life is not just quant stuff. I literally post nothing on my Instagram. So if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, you can do so at thecodingjesus, at codingjesus.com. I'm tired, I'm tripping over my words. Thanks for watching this video, guys. Cheers.